Hello and welcome to Railway Mania. This time I'm going to be taking you through the easy version of the radio control locomotive conversion. For this you will need a locomotive, snippy things, shrink wrap, a 3.7 volt single cell battery, battery extension lead, Deltang RX41 receiver, a soldering iron with optional filth. All of the links to buy these will be in the description. This loco uses the common and readily available Backman 3F Jinty chassis, which has a lot of space around the motor, which is good for RC. Here's the receiver. Be careful when handling as the aerial is quite delicate. The two yellow wires go to the motor and the red and black go to the battery. I'll tin the wires with solder. Everyone has their own method for wire stripping, here I am gently pushing on the wire with a blade, then rolling it back and forth before pulling the cut bit of shielding away. My soldering iron needs either a clean or a new tip. I'm using it to add solder to the wire so that I only have to join solder to solder later on. The motor connections already had solder so it was easy to pop the wires on. Make sure that they don't touch each other or short circuit on the motor casing. There are different types of connectors. I've standardised on the UM kind and the extension leads are handy because they give you a male and female connector. A word of warning, do not get into the habit of cutting more than one wire at once. The snips could bridge both wires at the same time and short circuit. If this is connected to the battery then that could be very very bad. Always better to get into the habit of cutting one wire at a time. Here's one of the batteries. I'll cut down the little tags on the side of the connector to make it easier to plug in and out. This helps avoid rough handling. Shrink wrap is used to seal the joins. This is really important as the bare wires must absolutely not touch each other. I use the shoulders of the soldering iron to apply heat to the wrap. For this logo, I'm adding a 12 volt booster. Normally I would not want to as 3.7 volts is fine for slow running, but this chassis is full of thick grease and needs running in and some grease removing to enable it to run better at slow speeds. The booster has to go in between the battery and the receiver. If you're adding a charging system, it must not go in between the charge and the battery as it will destroy the battery when you try to charge it. I'll cover that in a later tutorial. Plugging the battery in, the light on the receiver will start to flash. Before turning on the transmitter, I hold down the bind button and then press the power switch. This will pair the loco selection, on this one it's three, to the receiver. The blinking light will go solid when it's paired. It works, yay! Next I need to tidy up the wiring and shorten it so that it fits inside the loco body. On this loco I used a smoke box door held in with a magnet to access the battery. When it's plugged in the loco is on and to turn it off I unplug the battery. I'll do another tutorial in the future about adding a charging plug and charging system to enable a larger battery to be permanently fixed inside the loco. Thanks for watching, I hope this answers a lot of questions but if you have any more please ask in the comments. I'll put links to where you can buy the products I used in the description. Thanks again and goodbye for now.